I'm so glad that you've tuned in to one of the sermons from St Mary's. If you're new to our church and would like to find out more about being involved, please visit our website and drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. This morning's reading is, is taken from Acts chapter 3. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the hour of prayer at three o'clock in the afternoon. <clears throat> and a man lamed from birth was being carried in. People would lay him daily at the gate of the temple called the beautiful gate so that he could ask for alms from those entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked them for alms. Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. And he fixed his attention on them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver <coughs> or gold, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, stand up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Jumping up, he stood and began to walk. And he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God, and they recognized him as one who used to sit and ask for alms at the beautiful gate at the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the portico, called Solomon's portico, utterly astonished. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us? as though by our own power. Why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are all witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is Jesus, who must remain in heaven until the time of universal restoration 
that God announced long ago through his holy prophets. Moses said, the Lord your God will raise up for you from your own people a prophet like me. You must listen to whatever he tells you. And it would be that everyone who does not listen to that prophet will be utterly rooted out of the people. And all the prophets, as many as have spoken from Samuel and those after him, also predicted these days. You are the descendants of the prophets and of the covenant that God gave to your ancestors, saying to Abraham, and in your descendants, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. When God raised up his servant, he sent him first to you to bless you by turning each of you from your wicked ways. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. It's so good to be worshipping here together in the building and also at home. So shall we pray the words from Psalm 19, those wonderful words. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I was standing on the steps of the Bristol Hippodrome early one morning in March 2020, before the first lockdown to combat COVID-19. I was waiting for members of the walking group to arrive, since we were going to be guided on a city tour that day. I became aware that the sleeping bag in the corner had an occupant who would appear to have a small foot since I could see a small shoe sticking out of the side. As I pondered this and the empty wine bottle next to it, there was a movement inside the sleeping bag and suddenly a young woman popped out of it. Before I could say anything, she grabbed her blanket and rushed off barefoot to Boots Pharmacy a few doors away. When she returned to her sleeping bag, we had a chat. I gave her some money for breakfast, and she also accepted the offer of a prayer. She told me her name, we'll say it was Jane, and she regularly slept on the street because she always ended up fighting with someone in the hostels. Drug, drug addiction was part of the problem, I found out later and that this young woman was well known to those who work with the homeless. It caused me to reflect on the vulnerability of the people we find sleeping in our streets today. Addiction to the drugs that are so easily available in our culture is a real cause for concern. How can we help them? Perhaps the efforts of the council to give everyone in this situation a bed in a hotel during the pandemic has helped some to move on to a better life. But what exactly is a better life? Imagine the scene in Jerusalem 2,000 years ago. It's a busy time in the middle of the afternoon, about 3 p.m. The disciples, Peter and John, we're going to the temple for prayer. The temple is magnificent on top of the hill, gleaming white marble and gold. Just as they reach the gate beautiful, they are confronted with a lame, a lame beggar. This is the beggar's regular pitch. He was born severely handicapped and is now over 40 years old. Every day, people carry him here to beg from those going into the temple courts. There are no safety nets like the NHS to help the sick and disabled. 
This man relies on the generosity of the worshippers in the temple. He calls out to Peter and John, asking for money. They stop, and Peter commands him to look at us. The man didn't seem to be paying much attention till then, but now he looks expectantly at them as Peter says, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Peter then leans forward and taking the lame man by the right hand, he helps him to his feet. The power of Christ went into the body, into the man's body through Peter's hand, and the man jumps up and begins to walk. How amazing is that? A man who had never walked before accompanied Peter and John into the temple court, and he cannot stop jumping, leaping, and praising God. In Isaiah 35, verse 6, there is a prophecy that when the Messiah has come, then will the lame leap like a deer. This was the fulfillment of that prophecy. The lame man had asked Peter and John for money to buy his bread for the day. They didn't have their own money anymore. They lived in community where everything was shared. But they had something priceless to offer him as an alternative. And instead of arms, he got legs. No wonder he went wild with excitement when he discovered that they worked for the first time in his life. His expectancy of receiving anything had been so low that he hadn't even been paying attention. So before the healing power of God could be released into his lame body, his attitude had to change to one of faith and expectancy. I wonder if you have ever prayed for someone with no real expectation that anything is going to happen. I know that I have been guilty of that, but I have learned from experience that when you come to God with bold confidence and expectancy, he will reveal his awesome power in a phenomenal way. Praying with faith and expectancy will always attract the presence and power of God, and vice versa. Without faith and expectancy, God does not reveal himself. Anything is possible for God, our creator. As it says in Psalm 50, he is the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills and unlimited resources. But how often do we come to him asking for arms when we could receive legs? I recently read the story, this story about Alexander the Great, the Greek king who became one of the world's greatest military generals with a vast empire around 350 BC. Alexander liked to feel that his subjects could come to him about any matter. One day, a beggar gained an audience with him and asked him, for a farm for himself, a new house for his wife, a dowry for his daughter, and an education for his son. Alexander granted the large request, and when he left, one of Alexander's courtiers asked him, Why did you let that impudent fellow have so much? He had it all. And Alexander replied, I liked it. He treated me like a king. He asked big. Our requests to God are often so pitifully small, even though his word encourages us to bring our requests to a big God. Ask and you shall receive, Matthew 7, 7. 
You do not have because you do not ask God. James 4, 2. And Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and life to the full. I have been praying a big prayer for the past 18 months with a prayer team seeking God's intervention on the local university campus, North Village. It's part of our parish. We are asking God to reveal his presence and his power to the students for the awakening of a generation who probably know little about him. Many have had a strange year of isolation and loneliness during this pandemic. And we've now been given permission to reopen the Wills Chapel on the campus on Wednesday afternoons. This Wednesday, we kicked off with great interest among the students and 18 visitors turning up at the chapel. It's a good beginning. We are expecting signs and wonders. God always answers prayer. No prayer ever goes unheard. The answer may be different to the request, as it was in the story of the lame man at the gate near the temple. Ruth Graham always asserted that she would never have married Billy if God had said yes to earlier prayers. He may say yes, or no, or wait, or I'm going to surprise you, but he does answer. The crowd quickly gathered, amazed at the transformation of the disabled man that they knew had been sitting at the gate for many years. Peter seized the opportunity to assure the crowd that all the glory for this miracle must go to Jesus Christ. In verse 16, he says, It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that gives this complete healing to him, which you all can see. This is a basic requirement of our prayer, that it must always be prayed in and through the name of Jesus, and also, equally important, in alignment with his will. We are only the Lord's hands, ears, eyes and feet, privileged to act to reveal his glory. Tom Wright, one of our Vicar Gemma's favorite theologians, reminds us, however, that using the name of Jesus isn't a matter of a new kind of magic, a kind of ab abracadabra, which will make things happen automatically. There has to be faith. Faith in the one who speaks the name and faith in the one who hears it. The gospel message of the life, death, and resurrection announces the powerful name of Jesus. God had always planned it and foretold it through his prophets. Turning to Jesus in repentance and faith can bring hope and wholeness to the most troubled life as our sins are forgiven and times of refreshing can come to us. Like Peter and John, we too can be filled with the Holy Spirit, ready to offer the gift of healing, pointing people towards Jesus and determined not to take any of the glory for ourselves. I began by telling you about Jane, the hopeless woman I met on the Hippodrome steps a year ago. Jesus would offer Jane a better life. I know that. She may already know it. He is the author of life, an abundant life and believing in him and the power of his name is as relevant in the 21st century 
as it was in the first. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to pray the prayer of faith with our eyes fixed on you, believing in your great power to solve the most difficult problem, since nothing is impossible for you. Thank you for using us in your great plans and purposes to bring salvation and healing to those who have no hope. In the mighty and powerful name of your precious Son, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. <laughs>